Hi, I want to apologize right away for the choppiness of this video. My NVIDIA graphics card driver pooped in its diaper, which it does a lot, and that actually relates to what I'm going to talk about today. NVIDIA as a company has a reputation among developers for not getting along with others. And Nikki Haley, the ambassador of the United Nations, which is all about getting along with others, that, that's the concept, that's the idea. The United Nations, these warring nations have a place they can come together and talk. She's resigning. She just resigned. And I wanted to say a few things that I thought about this. And I, I wanted to be able to play a little tiny clip and then talk about that. But my graphics driver pooped in its diaper. So I'm just going to have to uh, wing it and you can go watch the videos. You'll see stuff. The thing that stuck out to me was were, were two things that she said. Uh, before I say what those two things are, I want you to know I really think that this is a genuine, honest resignation. I don't think she's getting retired, if you know what I mean, like fired, retired. I don't think she's getting retired. I don't think there's any dishonesty here at all. She probably really genuinely went to President Trump and said, okay, I've been here and I'm going to need a break because the UN's exhausting and so am I because it's 2 a.m. So Nikki and I are both really tired. That's probably how that happened. But she mentions two things. She just really talks about this. It's like she just really wanted to say this. It wasn't just I'm leaving and I'm really happy and I'm leaving and I'm happy. It wasn't that. That's a normal resignation. I'm leaving and I'm happy and we had great times together and the next thing is going to be fun. She really wanted to talk about two other things. She had a soapbox. She was on two of them. She talked about how politicians need to give themselves term limits, which I'm going to say something about that. The other thing she talked about was Ivanka and Jared Kushner. Now, Jared Kushner's been in the news, if you haven't noticed. He, uh, he really helped a lot with the NAFTA thing, apparently, with renegotiating it. And that was catching attention in the press, which at the Pacific Daily Times, I made sure to mention that. In, in, you know, I had links with that in, in the uh, editorials that I write there. And then Nikki Haley goes on about how great it was and amazing it was watching him work and how incredibly brilliant Jared Kushner is and how he's so smart. She's going on about how much respect she has for him. Okay. So you've got her talking about term limits and she really respects Kushner. I, I think Kushner's next in line for her job, frankly, from, from this. Kushner's a rising whatever. He's a very interesting person. For one, Jared Kushner's Twitter account has 64,000 followers and not a single tweet. It looks like he even deleted the auto tweet that he comes with. A very, very interesting person. I mean, how, how, do you, how, how do you convince Donald J. Trump to let you marry his daughter? You know, that, 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 that's an interesting person. So I'll let you go do your own homework on, on Jared. He's probably next in line. He wouldn't have been involved in NAFTA were he not. And she's probably mentioning this now, naming her successor, kind of. And, you know, Trump's known about this resignation thing for a long time. And he said in the next few weeks, he's going to say who's going to replace her. Well, that means he's already got someone picked out. So I think it's Jared Kushner. And so in that context, I mean, Nikki probably knows that. She's working with Jared. She's on friendly terms with the president. So I think that when Nikki talks about the need to give ourselves term limits, she's giving advice to Jared Kushner, her successor. The term limits are important. We don't want career-long politicians. And that's, that's another thing. The United States government is supposed to be a government that's run by laymen. 
It's supposed to be run by non-professional politicians. Any citizen can be an elected politician. Now, in the bureaucracy, there are other requirements. Like if you're appointed, like as a secretary or you know, the police, or you're running the desk at uh, the DMV's office, Secretary of State, whatever, you know, Secretary of State's office. In Michigan, we don't have a DMV. We, it's all Secretary of State. So you know, working in government, you have requirements, but the politician side, that's open and available for anyone. Anyone can be a politician in America. I was talking with the guy in Hong Kong. He was from India. And he said, how can Trump be a president? He's not a professional politician. I said, well, that's a good thing, isn't it? He said, well, what do you mean? A professional politician would know how to do politics better. And I said, well, those are the idiots that have been destroying the world. America is run by non-professional politicians, and we've got all the money that you guys in India need, and we've got all the stuff that you, you engineers in, in India calculate the designs for after we have the big concept. We've got all this money because we're run by the normal people. And ultimately, you know, the, the, the problem in Washington it is the professional politicians. We don't want career-long politicians. You're supposed to be a farmer, a doctor, an engineer, a scientist, a business owner, you know, a real estate developer. You know, you're supposed to be whatever working in, you know, a teacher. You know, why not? Yeah, you're supposed to be a something or other, even a janitor. You're supposed to be a something or other, a normal person, and you take a break from your normal citizen, normal civilian, normal person life, and then you go into politics to make the, the country better because you love your country and you see changes that you need made for your own normal work to continue. And then you finish being a politician and you go back to your normal work. That's how politics is supposed to be run in America. The people who are elected as politicians are supposed to not want the job. They're supposed to be kind of like William Wallace was. He wanted to be a priest, but then this whole other England thing came along and messed with everything. And then so he, he went and decided, okay, all right, well, I can't be a priest. I have to be too busy freeing Scotland. And usually the, the politicians that make the big positive difference drain the swamp, draw lots of criticism from the establishment for not having super wonderful table manners. You know, usually those people that make the big difference are the people that don't want to be there. They're there because they wanted to live their normal lives, but government or some powerful force wouldn't let them. And so they gave that up to go fix the problem. And I think that's the advice that Nikki Haley is giving to her successor because I think she already knows it's going to be Kushner. And I mean, it doesn't take a genius to guess that. That's my thoughts on this.